everything in America is completely fucked up. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Yaga Rambles, and I have returned, and I am in a much better mood than the <laughs> the last podcast. <laughs> uh, still getting over um, this weird. I had like a two days where I was uh, got some kind of fucking weird summer cold thing, which apparently is going around. Uh, a lot of people I know and come in contact with, and just the general public have it. They're all sick and. Uh, doing all that kind of stuff. So, uh, luckily for me, a few doses of Alka-Seltzer, cold plus, and a day and a half later, and I'm okay. But, uh, you know, my dad's got it, my sister's got it, uh, my friends got it, and, you know, co-workers, people just at, in the general public, man, like, everybody's got it. So, it's kind of weird, you know? Sometimes it makes you wonder, like, well, that's not normal, and Oh, well, it's just a virus. Yeah, that's all it is. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't know. Call me crazy, because I am, but it uh, seems a little odd to me that everybody at the same time is uh, getting sick. But who cares? I'm better. Um, and if you're feeling that and you know what I'm talking about, I hope you get better as well. So, what's been going on? <clears throat> I've uh, just recently been realizing that... Uh, you're always going to keep working on yourself, you know, (laughs) your whole damn life. You're just going to keep trying to become a better version of you, however that looks. I mean, if you want to, some people don't, man. I've seen people go their whole lives doing the same shit over and over again. And I've always asked the question, like, how the fuck can you do that? You know, because I can't. You know, once I've had too much shit, I just, at least when, you know, if I'm backed into a corner, I got to do something about it. You know, I see people just live in the same way for decades and for some reason still keep living. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, you know, that is what it is. Uh, I've recently taken back to the internet and realized, I'm like, you know what? If I got nobody to talk to in my general vicinity... I'm going to go to the internet and uh, leave comments on YouTube videos and shit like that because, I don't know, man. Usually I'm not a commenter on these fucking things, but sometimes I see stupid shit. Or if the video's good, I like to at least, you know, respond to it. And uh, I I, uh, responded to, uh, what was it, Bill Burr's Monday Morning Podcast one on YouTube. And... uh, there was a part in there because he had Tom Papa on there, and he was talking about how he's making bread, you know? And Tom Papa had mentioned that, like, it's weird that all of a sudden everybody's like, don't eat bread. You know, bread's bad for you. Everything, bread's and carbs and shit. And I'm like, you know, and I've been actually been, it's funny that he brought that up because lately I've been thinking about this. Like, you know, bread's been around with human beings for thousands of years, Okay. Jesus broke bread and gave it to his disciples, right? It's in the Bible, right? So why is it <laughs> that the last 10, 10 years or so, people are really just fucking so crazy about bread? And as far as I can tell, and people are going to be like, well, it's because of the gluten. Like, whatever. Maybe. Maybe it is. I honestly think it's because most bread is chemically induced, you know? If you make homemade bread from scratch, man, it, it's it's flour, salt, water, yeast. You know, it's just a few ingredients. It's not bad for you. Oh, yes, it is, Matt. Why don't you do some research? Research it now. Blah, 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 blah. Like, you know, I'm, I'm just saying, folks. <laughs> there have been centuries and centuries and centuries where bread was a crucial part to living. Like, people would, you know, uh, grow the wheat for flour to make the bread to eat. You know, it's been an essential part of life. And all of a sudden, in our gosh, gosh, our fucking wisdom of humankind inventions, we think that in the last 10 years, we have somehow realized that all this time, bread is terrible for you and carbohydrates. Well, I will say this. I think the bread, oh God, excuse me. I guess I'm still a little, have a little bit of a chest congestion going on. This is what I think. The bread that is in the stores today is loaded with a shit ton of chemicals and a bunch of stuff that isn't good for you, okay? So if you pick up the bread and there's more things in there than just flour, wheat, salt, and yeast, and you got all this other shit you can't pronounce, yeah, 
That's probably why bread's no good for you. It doesn't digest well. I'm pretty convinced that anything loaded with chemicals is bad for you. Whether it's bread, something else. If I pick up a label and look at it and read it and I can't pronounce that and it doesn't sound natural, hey, guess what, folks? Don't eat that shit. You know, I'm going to say it again. I pretend like it's 200 years ago and we didn't have grocery stores, preservatives, none of that stuff. So what did people eat? They ate meat, vegetables, and fruits, folks. Okay? They baked bread. They break, baked bread because you can get good energy from that because, you know, food wasn't as easy to come by. You know, you had to hunt for your food. You had to grow your food. You had to actually work. Your whole life was working to get food, right? So now, today, we got, you know, so many fucking people on this planet that we have to expand the food source and come up with all these synthetic things and call it bread, call it food, but in reality, it's not really fucking food. It's just, a, it looks like food, and it's got the shape of that, but it's definitely a whole bunch of other stuff that's terrible for the body to digest. So in the last 10 years, you got all these fucking people coming out like, don't eat gluten, don't eat bread, carbohydrates are bad for you. Let me tell you something about all the fads and diets that have been coming in and out of history, folks. It's always going to change. Okay, it's always going to change, you know. I remember I was listening to Alan Watson in one of his talks. He was he said this back in like the 60s. He's like, the diet, things they said that were good for you in 1921, all of a sudden it's different in 1930. And what was in 1930 was different in 1945. Like, it's always changing, okay. Eggs are bad. Eggs are good. Eggs are really good for you, by the way. You should really have eggs. There's a lot of good nutrients in eggs, despite the old rumors and things like that that people say. Now... You know, I think, honestly, if we didn't have so much chemically induced food, then people might be onto something, you know? <clears throat> Me, personally, I've just cut out most of the bullshit in my life. Like, anything. No fucking soda. No diet soda, which is even worse than regular pop. Anything I can't fucking pronounce. It has to have minimal fucking artificial flavors for me, you know? When I do buy bread, um, I look at the bread there's a what's it called as a bicardamide or something like that something really fucked up if you see it, it's like a z i if you see that chemical in bread and you're buying it don't fucking eat that shit because it is it's it's almost plastic folks you're literally you might as well crumple up a plastic bag throw a little uh ranch dressing on it and swallow it because that's what that chemical is <clears throat> so you know, I always find it funny when people order shit without fucking bread, no bun, no croutons, and stuff like that. And you need the carbs. I'm like, I think if you have actual bread, there's some really good nutritional value in that. People can fight me on this. You don't know about the gluten. That's always the argument. Gluten. I'm like, gluten seems to be a woman's problem. I know that sounds kind of crazy when I say that, but I, <laughs> I still don't understand it. And I know it exists. I know it's in bread and all that stuff, and apparently some people have an allergy to it. I don't really believe it, but some people are like, no, my doctor said I did. I'm like, maybe you did. I don't know. Why is it something that for thousands of years human beings depended on all of a sudden now is bad for you? I'll tell you why. <laughs> it's because we don't just make bread anymore folks like if you go into your kitchen and just make bread from scratch it's fucking delicious okay it's good for you there's no sugars in it that are gonna make you all uh, fat and you're worried about stuff people are so fucking people are so worried about eating carbohydrates and sugar that they will literally pump more synthetic preservative chemicals in their body to justify that that's better for them than fucking eating a piece of steak that's cooked in real butter and uh an apple no i'll have the fake apple that doesn't have the bread opposed to it because there is no carbohydrates and beep, 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 beep. and it's just a, i think it's a retarded argument folks it's just stupid i will eat bread i'm in the best shape of my life i still eat bread i don't eat fucking loaves of it a day and i don't eat the fucking terrible ass bullshit you know chemically induced you know wonder breads that are sponge like that that's not what bread looks like you know i come from a family who's always baked stuff you know we're, we're i'm a polish family and slovak family so there are tons of 
We are carbon it up, people, with our dumplings and our potatoes and all of our breads and our baked goods. And when you bake a real loaf of bread, it's it's great. It's delicious. It's good for you. Don't buy into this nonsense that just because five minutes ago an article came out in some fucking health organization thing that says, hey, it's bad for you. I'm like, mm, you know what's bad for you? Almost all the food that we eat today is bad for you. Meat, vegetables, and fruit, guys. Stick to that diet. You're going to be okay. Eat steak. Eat chicken. If you want, get your organic chicken, even though it's all organic, but it's not stuffed with a bunch of shit that the chicken eats, which I also don't buy into as much because when you cook stuff, folks, I'm here to tell you that when you cook it, you're cooking out a lot of that shit. The heat's going to kill whatever you think you're worried about in the meat. But I don't know what I'm talking about. I might just be talking out my ass right now. I don't even know why I'm talking about bread. Oh, yeah, it's because I... I uh, Bill Burr's Monday Morning Podcast with Tom Papa. It was true, though. Like, I've been thinking about that, and it's just crazy that somebody else mentioned it that's bigger than me. <laughs> a celebrity who's been around just doing stuff is like, yeah, why is bread so bad? And everybody will tell you, it's because you gain weight. Could you do this? I'm like, no, I don't think it is. I honestly don't. I think you think that's what it is, so you avoid it but yet i see all these people and i work in a restaurant folks and i see people who are like i'm gluten free and they don't look healthy to me i was like well uh, avoiding that bread and gluten doesn't seem like it's doing much for your image now does it so what else are you doing i was like you think if you just stop doing this one thing all of a sudden you're gonna get healthy no you have to pretty much overhaul and eliminate what you know like like Yoda says, you must unlearn what you have learned. Meaning, forget what you think you know and start fresh, folks. That's what I did. I go, I forget, fuck whatever stupid article or, you know, it's like when I was a kid. Oh, there's the fried food, the food pyramid. Remember that shit? And they're like, you got to eat something from there every day. And then I realized we don't need as much dairy as I thought. Because when I drink milk, I fart like a motherfucker. And I can't stop. And it's like, dude. So, what did I do? I stopped drinking milk. Holy shit, do I feel a lot better. And if I am to have a glass of milk, get the fuck out. And two hours later, man, I'm going to be clearing the room out. And I, it's going to be brutal for anybody who's in within five to ten feet of me. Okay? So, you, you got to figure this stuff out as you go. Listen to your body, folks. Listen to your body. Don't listen to the fucking... F- an article or a study that came out five seconds ago because it's always changing it's always changing and in my short 34 years on this earth i just realized like just avoid the bullshit you know anything that's processed and is molded to look like food just don't even eat it or at least eat very minimum amounts i'm not perfect i don't not eat this shit all the time I eat steak most of the time, meat, I eat a lot of protein and fats, you know, and I am lean as shit, okay? I do minimal exercise, I'm not a gym nut, I work 30 minutes a day lifting free weights. Balance, man. You Don't swing it in the pendulum the other way and set yourself up for failure, you know? Same thing with like, uh, sweets, man. I like, who doesn't like sugary good fucking desserts? Everybody. You can eat it. Just don't fucking eat it every day. And I love when people just avoid that shit altogether. Like, I never get a no sugar. And you know what? When you eat sugar-free foods, folks, that say they're sugar-free or fat-free, that's even worse for you. Because in order to make it semi-taste good, they pump even more chemicals into it. You're better off eating real ice cream that's just cream and sugar and that's it because that's what ice cream is it's fine for you stop buying into the bullshit stop buying into the nonsense okay it's fine sugar is the leading cause of all the problems in this fucking country now with all the fat fucks and everybody else it is dude i know it's poor diets and shittiness now i hate saying diet because i don't like going go on a diet because everybody else tell you which diet's the best one. Hey, let's go keto. Why don't you go vegan? Be a vegetarian. Don't eat meat. I'm like, I honestly do not agree 
with the meat thing. Because you can just look at your fucking teeth, folks. Your teeth, we are... What is it? Carnivores, but we're uh, omnivores, right? Omnivores, is that what it is? That's where it's both. We're omnivores, human beings. We can eat meat and plant food type shit because that's what our teeth are designed for. You know, if we were just pure carnivore, we'd have fucking fangs like cats and dogs and shit. But we're not. But those, look at the fucking teeth. They're designed to cut into meat. It's fucking nature. (laughs) God. People just ignore that sometimes, and it drives me nuts. Uh, Not that I know a lot of people who are, like, fucking vegetarians or whatever. They got that whole, thing. they don't eat meat because they feel bad about eating an animal. It's like, dude, do you think a shark is going to feel bad if you're in the water and you look like food? Is that shark going to care? No. To him, you're his dinner. Okay? That shark's going to take a bite out of your fucking leg, especially if you're a little overweight. You're going to give him more to chew on. (laughs) I'm just saying that, you know, sometimes... (laughs) Uh, uh, Man, just sometimes... You got to just... Stop and think that maybe what you know is all bullshit. Maybe what you've been told is all bullshit. Maybe you need to reevaluate what you think is healthy and what actually is. Because what I've learned, folks, is like we're so fucking smart, we're retardedly stupid as human beings. <laughs> We come up with all these complex words and situations and this and that to make us sound really, you know, more intelligent than we actually are. In reality, there's just basic needs you need as a human. Eat, sleep, poop, pee, sex, that's it. Everything else is subjective after that. If we were out in the wild and there was no society, there was no grocery stores, what the fuck would you eat? Whatever came across your path, especially if you were starving... You know, if you were starving, you'd start eating whatever was around. If you saw a worm on the ground, you'd eat that fucking worm. People are like, respect life. I'm like, that's easy for people who just go to the grocery store, pick out what they want, you know. Mm. But I can guarantee you, folks, one day there probably won't be a grocery store there. There's too many of us. (laughs) There's too many of us, and this way of life is not sustainable. I'm not trying. I did say this was going to be a brighter podcast. You know what? My fault, because I went down a rabbit hole with this, and that's what happens. When I have opinions and theories on it, I just keep on going, man. But, you know, whatever. I'm just telling you, I always speak about how I've lost weight and got healthy because of what I've done in my life through my experience. And if that helps people, and I don't claim to go on a diet, I don't claim to this, I just know I've uh, eliminated processed foods, I've cut out sugar, but I love sugar, man. I have sugar every day. I have something sweet. I just do because I believe three things your body needs is salt, sugar, and fats. Okay. That's what I think. You need salt, folks. I don't care what people say. Don't have high salt because you want to have a heart attack. I'm like, you need salt to live. When you sweat, you can see the salt come off your body, folks. You need it. It's a mineral that is essential for you to be alive. Okay. That is what we do know about all the 20th century and fucking modern medicine stuff and i'm not saying modern science and medicine is not all bullshit because thanks to that we've had a lot of actual breakthroughs thank god for penicillin right people were dying of fucking you know bacterial infections and all that shit until penicillin was discovered and then penicillin came around and was like hey man there's a cure the shit out of that and penicillin grows on bread (laughs) how about that you fucks who don't like bread yeah, penicillin's a mold, dude, right? I'm pretty sure it's a mold, and it can be grown on bread or something like that. And people would always be like, you know, and that's penicillin came naturally from somebody who discovered it on, I believe it was bread. This is penicillin. You know, I'm going to look it up right now because I'm fucking, because I'm crazy. Penicillin is a group of antibiotics which include penicillin G, penicillin V, procaine penicillin, Benzathin penicillin, intramuscular penicillin antibiotics were among the first medications to af- to be effective against many bacterial infections. Thank you, Wikipedia. Fuck yeah. See, that's why you got to educate yourself. 
All right, that was a little bit. Yeah, I'm just patting myself on the back. See, now they're widely used today through many types of bacteria, have developed resistance to falling extensive use, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So, medical use. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it was it, penicillin was discovered to be used against bacteria. Um, how was it discovered, though? That's what I want to know. History, main article. History of penicillin. Here we go. Prior to 1928, the history of penicillin was unclear. A number of uh, people observed the inhibition of bacterial growth by mol molds. Yeah, that's not how you spell molds. Get your shit together, Wikipedia. There are anecdotes about ancient societies using molds to treat infection. Ha! See, people dismiss these lures and histories from ancient cultures or, you know, other civilizations where they talk about this shit and people just brush over it like it's fucking nothing. See, penicillin is a mold. It's a natural thing. I honestly believe, and this is just me and my sole opinion, that there's a cure for everything on this earth for every disease we've ever had. It's all found naturally somewhere, somehow in this earth. It's not synthesized in a laboratory and given to you in a pill form to fix whatever problem it is. But then again, I could be wrong. Many, many later scientists were involved in Stables Manufacturing Penicillin, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it was like totally discovered kind of by accident in the early 20th century. 1928 pens was the first moderate, it was the first antibiotic. First antibiotic. There you go, medical fucking history people. Where's that? Do they even, I bet you they don't even graze over that shit when you go into medical school anymore. They just forget about it. Like, they forget how antibiotics came into fucking play in the first place. It just drives me nuts. Because you need to study history, folks, in order for to not either repeat the shitty parts, but also learn from it. You know, can't erase history. So anyway, notice the halo of an inhibition. Here, Scottish biologist Sir Alexander Fleming noticed a halo of inhibition of bacterial growth around a contaminant blue-green mold on a Staphylococcus plant culture. A plant culture. Okay, it wasn't bread, so my bad. But mold does grow on bread, and you can get penicillin from it. But whatever. He concluded that the mold was releasing a substance that was inhibiting bacterial growth. He grew a pure culture of the mold and concentrated what he later named penicillin during the next 12 years. He grew and distributed the original mold, which was eventually identified as penicillin. Uh, Notatum. Not Notatum? I suck. See, okay, just call it something else. <laughs> uh, now known as penicillin cryosignum. Whatever. He was successful in making a stable form of it for mass production. Thank you, Scottish biologist Sir Alexander Fleming. So you see, I don't know. That was a long rant on penicillin, and if you wanted to be educated, I guess you are now. So, anyway, uh, <laughs> it's all good, and I just, look, folks, every time something comes out, whether it's new information, most people like to just jump on the bandwagon and take that as fucking fact. And you know what I've learned? I don't do that shit anymore because most of the time I've realized human beings, myself included, are wrong all the time. So, let the information come out. Don't just accept it as fucking true or false or whatever. Sit back, think about it a little bit before you make that decision, you know? Do a little bit more fucking research. And if you really want to feel good and break yourself away from the matrix, stay away from all the processed food. Meat, vegetables, man. Pretend there are no grocery stores. Pretend you lived on a farm. You had to raise chickens. You had to get eggs every day. You had to hunt. You had to grow corn. You had to grow fucking potatoes. Something. Ha! <sighs> it's really not that complicated, but you know what? People are fucking stupid. With all the great forms of technology and fucking soul-sucking smartphones and apps that tell you things, people are so fucking dumb. Like, I don't know if we've become smarter or if we've become more retarded. <laughs> like, honestly, I can't even tell at this point. Um, I mean, smart with technology, yeah, where life has become more convenient, sure. You know, you can literally do everything from your soul-sucking phone, from pay your bills to order a cheeseburger to, you know, buy something on Amazon to tell your friend how much you don't like them and unblock them on friend, uh, Facebook. 
yeah, you can do all that. That's very convenient, you know. But when it comes to actual living, I think people have forgotten because it's too easy right now. It's just too easy, folks. Life is as good as it's ever been on this planet, but yet we find that there are more things and problems that don't aren't even really problems. It's a bunch of bullshit. Like, be grateful for what you got because this is pretty damn good, you know. Take care of your own life. Don't always follow the crowd just because that's the way it's going, especially if your gut tells you that's probably not a good idea. You know, listen to that little gut and voice inside your head because sometimes that voice inside your head and gut, that, that tells you the good things and to be right about it. So, fuck it. Eat bread. But not the shitty bread, okay? Just be conscious. Look at labels, man. If there's a... If something's only supposed to have like two, three, four ingredients and it's got 27, don't eat it. Try not to. If not, eat very little of it. Don't try to survive on that shit. You know what I mean? Just food for thought. Ha ha. Had to end the podcast with a joke. Food for thought. All right. I'm going to get out of here. Just want to touch base with y'all. I hope you love that rant on bread. And you should check out Bill Burr's uh, Monday Morning Podcast because I love Bill Burr. He's a funny-ass comedian, one of my favorites. And I will be seeing him in November, so I'm very excited about that. Uh, He'll be at the Chicago Theater. Get your tickets if you haven't already. And not that I need to promote him. He's a freaking genius and all that good stuff. I am getting out of here, guys. Remember, if you like this, share it on social media, please, because I feel like my stuff is getting buried on social media, on Facebook and YouTube, and the algorithms are just telling me to go fuck myself. So... If you can, like this, share it with your friends. If you like what I say, leave me some comments. Give me some topics to talk about on my next podcast because I can't always think. Sometimes I need direction from you folks. All right. Everybody have a good day, and I'll see you soon. Were you born an asshole? Or did you work it in your whole life? Either way, it worked out fine. Because you're an asshole.